Good afternoon. My name is Barbara Gressel, and uh, I've been working for Business Affairs and Consumer Protection for over 17 years. I'm currently Deputy Commissioner for the Adjudication and Prosecution Division. I, I happen to think we have the best department in the city because we help individuals such as yourselves that either have a small business or want to start a small business. And our, our job is to assist you and to make sure there's fair and equitable marketplace for consumers and businesses alike. Today I'm gonna to be talking about new ordinances that have taken effect um, it, this, this summer that are going to affect your business. And the PowerPoint is right up here. If you have a question during my presentation, please just wave your hand. I'm happy to stop and answer. So the first ordinance change I'm gonna talk about today is the minimum wage ordinance. Last year, in 2015, July 1st, the city of Chicago instituted the first step to increase the minimum wage in the city. So last year, the minimum wage went up to $10 per hour. And this July 1st, the minimum wage in Chicago increased to $10.50. Next year, the minimum wage will increase to $11. On July 1st, 2018, it will increase to $12 per hour and 2019 to $13 per hour. And every July 1st thereafter, the minimum wage will be tied to a cost of living adjustment. There won't be any minimum wage increase, uh, minimum wage increase the years that the unemployment rate in Chicago is equal to or greater than 8.5%. Um, the minimum wage also has increased for tipped employees. So, Tipped employees are paid a combination of a, a lower minimum wage plus what they get in tips. Um, and it will increase um, over two years, um, last year to 545 and this year to 595. And every July 1st, um, beginning next year and thereafter, the minimum wage will increase to, again, tied to that cost of living increase. Now, a lot of people have called and asked, does that minimum wage increase apply to me? So there are, it's kind of like a two, a two, um, a two step inquiry. First of all, employers who maintain a business in Chicago or, are, or outside of Chicago but are licensed by the city are required to obtain um, a business license and then operate in the city and then pay that new minimum wage. Employees who work at least two hours in the city within any two week period qualify for the minimum wage. Um, so for example, what kinds of businesses might be located outside of the city and are still required to get a city of Chicago business license? Well, for example, uh, a home repair contractor, or a general contractor, or um, an electrician, or a caterer who all of these businesses that want to provide services within the city of Chicago need a city of Chicago business license. But there may be other kinds of businesses that are located outside of the city that are not required to have a license. So those businesses are exempt from the minimum wage ordinance. Who, who is not covered by the, by the ordinance? If, uh, if a person is under 18 years of age, they're not covered, but the employer would have to pay the state minimum wage, which right now is $8.25. Adults during the first 90 days of employment, this would be a training period but after those 90 days, then they would be um, subject to that new Chicago minimum wage. Um, 
disabled employee, employees uh, for whom the employers have a state approved contract to provide that lower wage. Trainees taking part in a program for no longer than six months. And also, this one's important because I've again had calls about this, employees working at a business with three or fewer employees. So sometimes you'll find someone who's working in, say, a grocery store or a convenience store where there's the, the owner and the owner's wife and two employees. Well, that, that those two employees would not be subject for this Chicago minimum wage. Any questions so far? Yeah, so you're saying if your business has less than two employees, you don't have to pay them minimum wage? Less than three. Less than three, I don't have to pay them minimum wage? Correct. Okay, and the employees, what about, uh, you said for the first 90 days of employment? Correct, because so, generally those first 90 days, you're training that new person. Okay. Right, and testing them out, is this person gonna work out for me or, or not? You have to pay the state minimum wage, which is $8.25. Yes. Any other questions? So here again, I've listed the stages um, for the Chicago minimum wage. Last year it went up to 10, this year to 10.50, next year to 11, July 2018 to 12, and July 20. 19 to 13 dollars per hour okay any questions so there there's also the more complicated issue of how the minimum wage ordinance affects tipped employees because it does uh in the the state the current state minimum is 495 for tipped employees and what happens is that tipped employees have to receive the new minimum wage, which this year is uh, 10.50, right? Is that what I said? Yes, 10.50. Um, but through a, well, it's 10.50 this year, but they have to receive that through a combination of t wages and tips. So uh, there's record keeping involved for employers whose employees are, are tipped, for example, in, in restaurants. And most employers who have restaurants and have tipped employees are well aware of the record keeping that's required by the state. And the city's record keeping requirement mirrors that. And again, the only time the city really looks at any of these businesses is when we've received a complaint from an employee who says, you know, I, I think I'm supposed to receive the minimum wage, the new minimum wage, and I'm not receiving it. And then what we do is we go back to the employer and we say, we need your books and records for the past X number of months showing what you've paid your employees. So um, again, it's, a, it's more complicated with tipped employees because you have to add up their tips and, and that minimum that you're paying them, and it does have to add up to 1050 per hour. Any questions about this? So employers are responsible for posting a notice of wage increases and the employee's rights under the ordinance in their business facilities. And there are copies of that here on the, yes, you got it, here on the table. Um, you can also go to the department's website, and I'm gonna give you the address for that in a minute, and you can print out a bigger uh, copy if you'd, if you'd like, because that one's kind of small. Um, so your, your require, business is required to post that in their business facilities, and in the employee's first wage, wage envelope, um, when the uh, increase goes into effect. So every July 1st, you need to resend that to your employees. Yes? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Part-time employees or full-time? Both. 
part or full time. If they work, they, all I have to work is a minimum of two hours within a two week period, okay? Um, and then it's very important if you look at the bottom, the last point, employers may not discriminate or take any adverse action against an employee in retaliation for exercising their rights. Bless you, to file a complaint um, with the department or with the state. And there's that notice, which again is on the table. An employee who believes he or she has not received the increased minimum wage may call 311, the city's non-emergency phone number, consumer um, service request line, to report a violation of the ordinance to the city of Chicago. The department then sends out a complaint affidavit form to the caller, and that must be fully completed in order for our department to investigate the, the matter. Any employee who is paid less than the wage to which he or she is entitled may also file a private civil action, that's in the courts, and they can recover up to three times the amount of underpayment together with costs and attorney's fees. I do want to say that we've received uh, probably 350 complaints in, in the year, in the 13 months since the ordinance took effect. Um, and of those that we've investigated, we found several businesses that were not in compliance. But after, after we've contacted them and requested books and records, those businesses have turned around and come into compliance and paid their employees what they should have paid to begin with. Now, what we've decided to do is if, if they come into compliance, we do not issue tickets or enforcement to the businesses. That's not, our goal is not to punish. Um, our goal is to make sure that businesses are aware of what they should be doing and that they're paying their employees the correct amount. No, no, we, what we've done when we've reached out to the, to the um, businesses and we've informed them of the new minimum wage, I think sometimes businesses aren't always aware. I mean, we've been pretty, um, we've gone out and done what we thought was a lot of publicity, but maybe not everyone's aware. And those businesses have turned around and paid the, the underpayment. So we've gotten that for them. And if we had to, we could file a case in court, but we've, we've not had to do that because when we found an underpayment, it's been corrected by the business. Just correct it and we'll get along just fine. We're not trying to punish. Now, if, if, if the business is not in compliance and refuses to come into compliance, that would be a different story. And did you have a question, sir? So like, what if you have uh, the majority of the year, 10 out of 12 months, you have two employees fewer than three. So let's say for two months out of the year, you have three or more. More than three. More, more than three. Than three. Well then for those two months out of the year, you would need to pay those employees a, the new minimum wage. Well, they might not be happy, but so you're going to ask the businessman. You're going to have to, you're going to have to sort that out. I, I, 
You know, unfortunately, all I can do is tell you what the law is. I can't tell you how it really works out there in, in the real world. Okay? All right. So here's the website if you would like more information or about the Chicago's minimum wage ordinance. It's available at uh, www.cityofchicago.org backslash minimum wage. Okay? Any question? Any more questions? Okay, now we're getting to everyone's favorite, yeah. the plastic bag ban. So it's really, that's a misnomer. It's really not a minimum weight, a, a plastic bag ban. It's just a different kind of plastic bag. So last year, the city of Chicago joined more than 200 other jurisdictions across the country to address the problem of single-use plastic bags. And what the ordinance says is written up there, no store shall provide a plastic carryout bag to any customer for the purpose of enabling the customer to carry away goods from point of sale. Okay, again, that's what this says, but the rest of the ordinance goes on to explain it a little better. So here's what I wanted to know. Why are plastic bags such a big deal? Okay, I mean, we use them to pick up dog poo, right? They're, they're, they're really good. Well, plastic bags are, those single-use bags are lightweight and they're easily airborne. They get caught in trees, bushes, fences, on wires. They become caught in store, storm drains, which ends up causing flooding problems. They can cause problems to plants um, that ensnare them, as well as animals, which um, get tangled up in them or use them for food. Uh, plastic bags remain in lakes, rivers, and canal environments for many years. They absorb toxins and they are really slow at breaking up. So there's lots of reasons why they're considered a big deal to people who care about the environment. Now let me tell you first of all that the ban, and this is why I say it's not really a ban, does not apply to dine-in or take-out restaurants or to any store that's not a chain store organization. Well, what do I mean by a chain store organization? So a chain store is defined as three or more stores that have a common ownership or any store that's part of a franchise. So the little corner store, you know, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Jones, it doesn't count. Your takeout restaurant, it doesn't count. But it does account, it does, it does, um, it, it, it does apply to Target or Jewel or uh, Mariano's or Kmart or, you know, the big store, big stores, chain stores, or even like 7 Eleven. Okay. A uh, gas stations. Gas stations. If, are you a chain? But, uh, I don't know how, uh, how you say it's a chain or not, but it's a system. So you're individually owned, but uh, you know, the Well, you're individually owned. You're not really. Are you a franchisee? No. Okay. Well, then it doesn't apply to you. So um, as of last year, the ban, uh, as of this year, the ban applies to great big stores and smaller stores. So last year it only applied to big stores like Target or Jewel, and this year it applies to smaller stores like maybe 7-Eleven or something like that. Uh, and it, they measured it by uh, being bigger than 10,000 square feet or smaller, and what do they mean by floor area? That, that's the whole floor space that's enclosed by the walls of the building. So the, if the store did not, did not uh, previously provide carryout bags, they don't have to now. So there's, there's, there's stores throughout the city that don't really provide carryout stuff for their customers, like Costco or like Aldi's, and there, there's others. They didn't have them before, they don't have to have them now. 
Um, but stores must now have either reusable bags, recyclable bags, or compostable plastic bags for its customers. They can sell the bags, they can provide them at no cost, whichever they choose. Customers may also bring bags or boxes of any type into the store for their own use. I have a bunch of bags, of, you know, recycle or bags in my car that hopefully I remember to take in with me. But I also carry one that folds up real little in my purse, which is uh, nice too. All reusable bags must have handles. Um, must be designed and manufactured for multiple uses, uh, must be machine washable or made from material that can be cleaned, must have a minimum volume of 15 liters, whatever that is, um, and must not contain lead, cadmium, or any other heavy metals in toxic amounts. The reusable bags must have printed at the uh, either on the bottom of the bag or in a tag, the name of the manufacturer, where it was manufactured, and a statement that it doesn't contain any of these, uh, any of these materials, and a percentage of post-consumer recycled material that's used in them. If made of plastic, the reusable bag must be a minimum of at least 2.25 mils thick. And that's what we've seen the most of in Chicago since the ordinance took place. I'm sure, how many of you shop at Target, for example, or, or uh, Jewel? Um, uh, they, they use those heavier plastic bags. Some stores have gone to the paper bags. I think uh, Whole Foods and Mariano's and some of the others only have the paper bags now. Any questions so far? Stores uh, may provide recyclable paper bags. This talks about what those requirements are. Uh, must be 100% recyclable overall. Uh, must be compostable and accepted for recycling. And must also have information printed on the bag about where it came from and the name of the manufacturer and all that. And then compostable plastic bags um, are those that can be broken down um, by, the, by biological processes. We have not seen these in Chicago, um, but um, this, this slide tells you what those um, qualifications are for compostable plastic bags, compostable paper bags. There are also other bag rules um, for retailers. If a store offers plastic carryout bags, that store must also provide an easily identifiable bin for collecting bags for recycling. If a store offers plastic bags, the store must also provide reusable carryout bags for sale. And if a store offers or provides plastic carryout bags, um, they must have a sign that says, please use a recycle at a participating store. These are rules that are in the retailers, uh, City of Chicago retailer, retailer rules. And finally, um, the city requires each retailer to send an annual report for the previous year that details the total amount of carry out plastic bags that it has collected. And that, that um, report has to be sent to this department every, every February. Yes? Have you consolidated that report and have determined um, how many bags are used or you know, there's been a difference in before the ban, after the ban? Um, I, can, I can check that for you. I'm not, I'm not personally aware of that. I don't, I'm not the intake person for those reports, but I think that's a great question. So why don't you follow up with me afterwards? Um, so when and what does my department do about 
plastic bags? Do we go hunting for plastic bags? Do we uh, check them for their weight? What, how, how, what can retailers uh, and stores expect? Um, if we receive complaints from the public, we would go out and respond to those complaints. We have not in the 13 months since the, in the 12 months since the uh, ordinance became effective, we've not received any complaints. But during our inspections, our department investigators have looked to see that the ordinance is being complied with. Um, I know that we have given notices to correct uh, for not having a bin, uh, the plastic bag bin. Um, we've given, and a notice to correct is just what it sounds like. It's not a ticket that, uh, that they then have to go to court on. It, you know, we, we like to give a warning for those kinds of things. Um, we've given um, uh, notices to correct for um, not having reusable plastic bag, uh, pay, uh, reusable bags for sale. So that's what we've seen. Um, and generally when we've gone back to those, those um, locations, we found that the business has come into compliance with the law. Um, so, yes. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yes. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but there are recycling uh, places that that do collect them, and so I could look into that. Uh, if you'll contact me afterwards, and I'll get you that information. Okay. Good question. Uh, if that, just to reiterate his question, um, this gentleman asked, "What do we do with those plastic bags that are collected in that bin? What, where do we give them? What do we do with them?" So we'll find that out and, and let you know. Um, so we do have the authority under the ordinance to conduct audits on bags, to check on the bag size and the labeling requirements. Um, at the time that the ordinance went into effect, I received um, a number of con calls and emails from companies that manufacture bags and wanted to know if we would uh, you know, certify their bags or we would, um, we would approve their bags for use. And uh, I don't, fortunately, I don't have to do that. So, but any organization that wishes to obtain approval or to certify their, their products can submit a letter to the Commissioner of Health. And that information is right up there at the bottom of this slide. Any, any questions about that? Okay, so we've got two of the three big changes under, um, under the city's new ordinances um, talked about already. And now the third one um, relates to ordinances affecting tobacco retailers. Anybody in here uh, have a tobacco retail license? Just one? Just one in the back? Okay. Well, I bet you know all, all what I'm going to talk about already. So the biggest change in the city of Chicago is, was effective July 1st of 2016, and that is that the sale of tobacco products and accessories to persons under the age of 21 is now prohibited. For retailers, we, we want to let them know that their employees who are age 18 and older may still engage in selling those products, but tell them not to smoke in the store. Um, well, they can't smoke in the store anyway. You know, it's a smoke free, right? Uh, and the new warning sign to minors must be posted in all stores that have a retail tobacco license. Uh, that new sign is right over there on the table. So what does this mean? This means it is illegal to furnish tobacco products to anyone under the age of 21. The, re the warning sign must be conspicuously 
posted in any store that has a retail tobacco license. And please know that VACP, this department's investigators, with the assistance of a youth participant, test every single tobacco licensee every year to determine is, if a sale is made to the minor. There are over 2,500 retail <clears throat> tobacco licenses in Chicago. And I'm not kidding when I say we go to everyone at least once, and some of them more than, more than once. Any question about that? What's the fine? Uh, the fine for the first time is $1,000. For the second offense, within two years, is $2,000. Uh, within two years? Within two years. Nope. 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 Two years. And the third offense, within two years, is also $2,000. But the third offense of selling tobacco to a minor is also, will end up getting your license revoked. So the tickets themselves, are heard at the Department of Administrative Hearings over at 400 West Superior Street, but the revocation proceeding would take place here. This is actually a courtroom where the Mayor's License Discipline Commission sits. Yes. So how about if you and I have this conversation af after for it, okay? I'm happy to talk to you for a long time at afterward, okay? So um, there's another part of the new tobacco ordinance that was effective July 1st. Um, taxes will now be imposed on other tobacco products, including cigars, pipe tobacco, smokeless tobacco, and smoking tobacco. And the amounts are listed on, on the slide. Um, currently, um, there actually um, is, a, um, is a court challenge to the city's ability to enforce that new tax. So the city has deferred implementation of it pending the outcome of this court challenge. Retailers are not required to pay the tax currently, but should be aware that it's pending. And just know that every person required to collect these new taxes should keep accurate books and records that will be available to show the city. Um, any questions about that? Again, we're not gonna be collecting this tax right now. No for that, right? Correct. Okay. No penal. No, no penalty. So when it comes into full effect, whenever. Well, it's either going to come into effect and then it'll be announced. And we we previously sent a letter to every tobacco licensee informing them of these changes, um, and we would, I'm sure, send another letter in, informing everyone that yes, this taxes going ahead, or if it's overturned, invalidated by the court, then there will be price, price floors, um, minimum prices that will be imposed for cigarettes at $11.50 per pack, little cigars, $11.50 per pack, large cigars, $1.36 each, non-pipe smoking tobacco, $11.29 per ounce, um, smokeless tobacco, 4.94 per ounce, 
and pipe tobacco for 56 per ounce. So right now there's no change, no additional taxes. Um, we, and it's, we have no idea when the outcome of the pending court case will be announced. Um, if the, the tax is allowed to stand, there'll be information sent to tobacco retailers and they'll need to collect um, this tax um, on each uh, product. If the, if the court invalidates the tax, says no, City of Chicago, you cannot tax these products, then we're gonna have these price floors. Okay, any, I know it's a little confusing. Any questions? Is that what a pack of cigarettes cost, 11 in the city? I don't know what they cost. Sir, can you help us? Okay, what do, what do cigarettes cost now in the city? $12? Okay. Okay. That would be the minimum, no, that would be the minimum amount that a business would be allowed to charge for each of these types of products. Yes. Okay. And this stops right at the state line. No, Not city of Chicago. No, no, I mean, but the, the state line, oh, so that's just the city. Just the oh, city okay, of I Chicago. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Any other questions? All righty. So I went through um, some of the tobacco laws and I thought, well, let me give a few reminders to everyone here. So retail tobacco dealers must obtain a license for each store with each register identified. Um, they must purchase tobacco products only from a licensed City of Chicago wholesale tobacco dealer. They must have the required city county tax stamp affixed to every cigarette package. They must ensure that tobacco sales are made only to persons 21 years of age or older. A tobacco dealer must conspicuously post the warning sign to minors. They must sell cigarettes in the manufacturer's sealed packets. Single or loose cigarette sales are prohibited. Um, tobacco dealers must keep a detailed record book in English of all tobacco purchases from a licensed wholesale tobacco dealer. The book must be opened at any reasonable time for inspection by any um, business affairs official or Chicago police. And the book has to include the name and address of the business where the tobacco is purchased, the seller's invoice number and license number, and a description of the cigarettes that were, that were purchased. Um, one of the other recent ordinances that uh, I should also mention uh, concerns e-cigarettes. So electronic cigarettes, I, I've, you've seen people with those things. They're called vape shops, I think, some of them. E-cigarettes are considered tobacco products. So again, those can be only sold to someone 21 years or older, have to be sold by someone at least 18 years of age or older, and um, the seller must have a City of Chicago Retail Tobacco license. So one of the things we've seen a lot of, um, and I, I think part of it is a function of the, the high cost of cigarettes in the city, We've seen a lot of single, of the sale of Lucy's or single cigarettes. So I have seen that the police are, are cracking down on this and our investigators, when they're in a store and they see that the store is selling them, they also issue tickets. And um, uh, so, so it's on the rise, but the police enforcement of the prohibition against the sale of cigarettes is also on, on the rise. Any questions about these tobacco matters? Yes, sir. Yes, 
that's exactly what they're doing. We're seeing an increase in the number of tickets that are written. Not for the stores. Not for the stores. My invest BACP investigators write to the stores, but cannot write to someone out on the street. The police write for out on the street. So if that's happening outside of your business, you need to call 911 and report it. Not 311, 911. Okay, because that's illegal activity. So Don't when the stores be. Do it, it's still illegal because it is, and my department can. Uh, you can call three one one and report that, and my investigators will go out and. Some of them are very open with. Yes, and let us know. Call three one one and say there's there are um, this store at. You know. Because it shouldn't be a difference if someone's outside. That's wrong. Yes, it's wrong. It's inside. It, yes. No, you're correct. The difference, the, the difference is who is allowed to enforce the, the law. So my investigators can enforce, can issue tickets to a business for, um, for, doing, uh, for violating the city ordinances. But we don't have the authority to issue tickets to people out on the street. That, that's a police function. Just you see the... Okay, okay. But... But uh, this gentleman is correct that it, when it's happening right outside his store, that's impacting his business. But the store owner, you give him a ticket, he doesn't go to jail. But the guy outside selling the leases, he goes to jail. It's not a jailable offense. So if he's going, if he's being arrested, it's, it could be for something else. No, we, so it's like a yeah, so, so clearly he probably would be that one because we yeah. know we know and you know what you know. So we need yeah. to yeah. 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 yeah, well, yeah. So, you know, so I again, don't we don't have the authority no. for uh, sending someone to jail. We we can't do that. Only the police can do that. We know we see in community. Right. We know we see. Well, and, and we see that it's a big problem. So when there are communities that have nuisance businesses, that's that's one of the things the uh, community will tell us. And in fact, they'll tell us that we believe that these people standing out there selling cigarettes are being single cigarettes are being supplied those cigarettes by the stores. So we, we, we work with the stores to change that behavior. So it, it's a problem in many communities. Any other questions? You're quiet. You don't have a question for me? Yes. Okay. Well, I think that's the end of my show. Yes, sir. I, I'm not arguing or defending one way or another, but I think a lot of people uh, that don't operate businesses just don't know that if they own a pack of cigarettes, they can't sell some, one to somebody else. I think the general public just doesn't. Well, you know, um, who was it that said, I believe in the goodness of all people? So that, that's okay. Pollyanna, right? Pollyanna. All right, well, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, and actually, if I could take your contact information and your contact information, and I, I can get answers to your questions. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm sorry. Well,